Gila Kebi Scholz is a gospel recording singer, songwriter, actress, goodwill ambassador, entrepreneur, humanitarian, senior healthcare and IT professional. She's a wife, a mother of four. She has a bachelor's degree and master's in technology management from the University of Maryland University College. She's a member of the New Life Ministries International Church in Maryland. Gile had a desire to sing and act at an early age and was commonly called pop star among her peers. Gile later acted with Kalondo Theater and Spence Productions before traveling to the United States. She launched her debut album in 2011, Bringing the News. Gile has a well-rounded entertainment career and wears multiple hats such as events coordinator, talk show host, which she does as a consultant for Front Page Film Studios and Gospel Drums, who airs their shows on the USA national television networks and internet TVs. Gila is set to release multiple songs in 2021 and to start multiple projects. Gila strongly believes in empowering, promoting, and uniting the entertainment industry. She is the founder of the Sierra Leone Association of Artists and Musicians, SLAM, an organization whose mission is to promote awareness, provide a forum, and advocate for the creative and economic vitality of the Sierra Leone entertainment industry. Gila is the co-founder and executive director of Save the Nation, a nonprofit that seeks to empower people in disaster situations and developing countries, providing assistance to the needy in the United States and in Sierra Leone. This is World Talk with Aline TV Show. I am your host, Aline Keister. I'll be right back after this. So let's watch the real talk with Aline and TV show by our very own daughter of Sierra Leone, Aline Kistar. Welcome back to Real Talk with Aline TV show. This is season three. I am here shooting in the United States. Of course, this is the celeb edition. Today, I have the beautiful gospel artist, and of course, nobody but Gile Kevi shows. Welcome to Real Talk with the Link TV show. I'm excited to have you here. How are you doing today? I'm doing wonderful and thank you for having me, Eileen. You look beautiful. Thank you. So do you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm always beautiful. Anyways, um, a gospel artist, but you wear a lot of hats. Of course, I read it earlier, multiple hats. She does a lot. I mean, trust me, I didn't even know until I got here. But before we get into all of that, to start off with, I love God, of course. But for you to sing for God, what made you do it? Um, I always say I had no choice. Okay. Even before I decided to sing professionally for God, my entire life, all my steps were ordered by Him. Oh. Going through so much, like that would be a whole book, another story, another bio. <laughs> but, but yeah, God has been in every aspect of my life, through my parents, through the wars. I've been in both wars, so many things. Oh, really? Yes. I've been in between bullets. So I have every reason to praise God. Yes. Definitely, that is a reason. Yeah. Have you always been spiritual or it's because of the fact that you just explained that, you know, so many things has been, you know, with God. Have you always been that type growing up or is it because of these situations that made you turn to God? So let me tell you, I was a pagan until, um, would I say, 18, 20 years old mm -hmm. because my dad was a Muslim. And my mm -hmm. mom was a Christian. Okay. But my dad wanted us to find our own way. All right. We weren't okay. allowed to get baptized because he wanted us to choose what we wanted to be. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. So I, I, was, I, I loved God. I believe above Christianity, above being a Muslim, above religion, your heart, your heart is at the key of the matter and okay. your relationship with Jesus, with God himself. So... Apart from Christianity, I am highly attracted to kind-hearted people. And I think that matters the most, how we treat one another as human beings, no oh. matter what our relationship, our religion is. Okay. Yeah. That's really interesting, the fact that you're able to just choose, coming from a family where they don't tell you what to do is what you decided to do. Mm -hmm. um, really, really great. Um, you act. You sing. Yeah. Masters. You consult. You have this. You have that. Let's start with the talent. When okay. did you realize, like, I can act? Like, I mean, Kailondo Theater, I remember, like, way back, Kailondo and all these places, look at all these productions. Mm -hmm. Like, did you just get up one morning and started acting and realize, or 
it was school plays or how did you get into it? <laughs> so I believe talent comes from within and it okay. comes from a tender age. Mm -hmm. And I believe that's why in the United States, a lot of the kids start early because okay. they, the environment and society and the culture mm -hmm encourages them to tap into their talents from an early age, which we don't have much of in Sierra Leone. Right. So I did attend the St. Joseph's Secondary School. Before okay. that, in my earlier years, in a foreign country, I was always singing. I knew all of Elvis Presley's songs. Yes. Are you serious? Yes, I knew all his songs. I knew all of Whitney Houston's songs. You know, okay. Bonnie M., Ken Rogers. Those are my dad's favorite, mm -hmm. New Diamond. But when it, I got to St. Joseph's, I was in in plays, school plays, and okay. at that time, mm -hmm. David Vandy was actually one of our tutors. Really? Yes, and we, we acted Cry of the F Country Virgin mm -hmm. there. I had a supporting role in that play. Okay. Yes, and um, that's where my acting career actually took off. When they brought Maltina to Sierra Leone for the first time, my sister and I were picked. At that time, we were like 11, 12. We were picked to do the ad. Okay. And then at the last minute, my dad pulled us out. He didn't want us to be on stage or be famous at such an early age. So, so again, there came the limitations of education above talent and entertainment. And that was always in my way at all times. Oh, yeah. wow. So was it the um, commercial? Because I remember Maltina. Maltina. Get a taste of lively living. Have a Maltina. A Maltina. Yeah, I remember at that. Every party where I'm a guest. So a little, yeah. All right. I, I mean, yeah, we did the whole thing and got pulled out eventually. But um, after, in college, okay. I did some acting on a small scale. But after college, I did act with Spence Productions and worked with them and a few radio stations to do voiceovers. Okay. So before, and Kyle and Theater, before leaving for the United before States. Before leaving for the United States. Yes. But when you got here, that's mm -hmm. when you focus on music. Um, have you acted any films here? Or? I have acted films. Okay. Well, before United States, I, at some point I was in the Gambia, and okay. I joined Youth So Christ, and we sang in different places. Okay. Came here to the United States and sang in churches at, at all times, but as part of a choir. And it, it took a very long time for me to find my voice and know that I could actually do it when I sang for some people, you know, just jokingly, and like, she can sing. I, I couldn't believe the reaction I got, got from them. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, there must be something good in this, you know, still. Mm -hmm. And my husband, I, I thank God for him. He empowered me. He didn't discourage me. He did realize I had a dream and a vision from youth. And this was my opportunity away from my parents in my adult life. I've, I've got educated for them. I got a master's here for him and the family. And mm -hmm. this was my time. It was your it, it's time. like coming to America, you have the dream. And all you got to thank God for is for your life, good health, and to be able to fulfill those goals. And every day I ask him, Lord, please allow me. You know, that's, that's all I ask for him. Yes. And you enjoy it. I, I love it. It's like getting a high. <laughs> I get a high on life. I know you have a lot going on for yes. 2021 as far as the music. Mm -hmm. um, how many albums do you have on your belt? I have one. You have one? Yes. Okay, I that's bringing the news. two singles. Okay. Yes. Um, so have you... You know, won awards for all those. I mean, when did you release it? 2011, I've, right? Yes, I released it. So it's been like almost 10 years. Yes, I've won. What, a, I mean, what's the, 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 why did you wait so long to I'm, do another one? I'm picky about perfection, professionalism, okay. and image. Mm -hmm. I do believe that when we pray to God, He does hear our prayers. Okay. Right? So even as we ask God for what we need, mm -hmm. we have to prepare ourselves. Okay. Um, I just got something I've been asking for for, for 11 years, oh. but I was prepared. Right. So when you got it, it was I like, was boom. prepared. They needed somebody with three different kinds of skills. And I was like, who in the world is ever going to need someone with all these skills? But I was prepared. And the same way I believe that there are a lot of networks, connections, gatekeepers, and door openers out there. Mm -hmm. We pray for those connections. But most importantly, you prepare yourself for that day. So when we are preparing ourselves musically, spiritually, mentally, socially, economically, right. we have to be ready at all times. If they put you on a stage, you have to have the look. If you are sending your bio out, your press kit, your press kit, mm -hmm. which is what we all as artists, professional artists need, right? right? You should be ready. And that's one of the reasons why um, Slam came about. Okay. You know, being able to let people know that you have Facebook. When we started, it was on 
pick not a lot of people on Facebook. Right. And now social media is like a whole different thing now. Yes. I would tell people like a lot a lot has gone on, you know, but what they see on social media now is what they take. And people are actually back there doing a lot of good work, Mm -hmm. but it wasn't shown then. Exactly. You know what I mean? But oh well, we're still gonna just move with it. Mm -hmm. Um so album, when do you think you're gonna release a two thousand twenty one album? The, the entire album will come out in 2022. But oh. before the end of mm-hmm. this year, my goal is to release two songs. Okay. Yes. Are you excited about those songs? I am super excited. Yeah, but the year is almost here. I mean, I mean, the end of the year. You know what I'm saying? So I want to know. This is real talk. You need to tell me exactly when you're going to release these songs. My goal. Because guess what? I listened to some of them. Oh, my God. They're dope. I can't wait oh, at yes. all. You know, so I'm just excited. Don't, don't, you know, it's okay. I I like to express myself in my songs. Mm -hmm. I I believe in religion. I believe in Christianity. I believe in God and Jesus Christ. But I also believe that if if I was out there Mm -hmm. and I did not tap into the good behavior of a religious person who Mm. took the time to come out in the streets and know me, right, I would have never come through those doors. Okay. If I went through the church, the door of a church, and I could not connect or relate to somebody, or I was judged, which we are a lot of times, mm-hmm. I would not be that Christian. And I don't want to be that Christian who they say we should not mix darkness and light. I don't want to be that person who judges you by the way you look, look your lifestyle. I believe in giving everybody an opportunity. I believe in being a blessing to everybody. God does not discriminate. True. So being able to sing songs that will cut across all cultures, mm-hmm. all societies, all walks of life is something that I truly embrace. Nice. And I like it. I like the fact that she do- doesn't judge at all, like you said. And that's how it's supposed to be. Because some Christians, I'm sorry, I'm a Christian. I love God. Everybody knows that. However, you know, they kind of want to tell you what to do. Mm-hmm. God is not like that. Don't go anywhere, because I'll be right back after this. So let's watch The Real Talk with Eileen and TV Show by our very own daughter of Sierra Leone, Eileen Kistar. Welcome back to Real Talk with Aline TV Show. If you just walked in, I have the beautiful Gila Kebby Shows. She's a gospel artist for you that don't know her. I mean, she already did her album a long time ago, but she's doing a lot. And of course, she's the founder of Slam. Slam just had an awards. We're going to talk about that because there's some little controversies about the awards. I happen to win the best talk show host. Not because of that. I have her here. I deserve it. Anyways, we'll talk about that. But while you are here doing gospel and things like that, like, I said earlier, she wears multiple hats. She um, was a public relations manager for the Africa Gospel Concerts. Yes. Um, I know you guys were just bringing like competition to gospel. How did that go? Like, how was it? That was great. Okay. Because we were able to tap into um, gospel people from all nations. Okay. It caused us to do research into different African countries. We actually had um, Janet Otieno from Kenya. Mm -hmm. All over the world, all countries. And I think that's a blessing because... A lot of them, a lot of gospel ministers are not encouraged to come out of the church. Some refused to because it was an African gospel musical contest. So wait, right? wait. when you say they're not allowed to come out of the church, mm-hmm. is it by the pastors, the bishops? They're not encouraged. They're not in, okay. Yes, because, because as a child of God, if you are not strong in your faith, when you go out, you become proud, you taste fame, right? Right. And, and you really have to work on yourself in so many ways. There's mm-hmm. so many divorce rates, not just, you know, in ministry or in singing publicly or going out publicly, but, you know, in every kind of entertainment industry. Right. So those are things you have to be mindful for, of. But when, when a pastor has a good musical leader or singer, they want to hold on to them. I would want to hold on to mine. Right. Mm -hmm. But Mm -hmm. I I think when you look at pastors like Pastor Chris of Nigeria, Mm -hmm. his church has bred the most gospel ministers. Right. Sierra Leone has yet to boast of one One. Mm -hmm. pastor, bishop, you name it, that can that can say I have bred 
these people and they are internationally renowned and needed and wanted. Mm -hmm. It's like as in Syrian, as gospel ministers, we have to fight every step of the way, push ourselves, knock on doors, you know, and you get judged in the process. You, you get judged. You get told how you should be and how you should not be, not just by the pastors, the ministers, the churches, but by some of your fellow minute gospel singers. Mm -hmm. and, and what we, some of us realize, and others choose not to, is that everyone has a calling. God could have called you to worship. He could have called you to praise. He could have called you to go out and evangelize. Right. And he could have called you to heal. You understand? Right. He could call you to unite. And, and in life, we have to find our calling. I can definitely tell you, I found my calling. My prayer was God direct me. Direct and you. if God loves me and my pastor is doing a good job, I know how to talk to God. And I hear him when he talks to me. Okay. So I, I know what my calling for Christ is. So you feel like that's the problem with the gospel um, industry in Sierra Leone, the fact that these bishops, uh, you know, they're not really allowing, you know, the singers to explore. Not just in Sierra Leone. No, okay. it's, it's all over the world in But look at all ways. the other, other countries, though. Like, mm. um, most of them, they're really big. They dress well. The Marci Chinos and it's all that. that. It's not people, that they're not allowing them. You know, but they, they really just doing a lot. Yeah, it's not you know that I mean? they're not allowing them. It's, mm -hmm. the, it's the platform that will allow you to say, go out, spread your wings. No, why I say that? Because are. I have a friend, of course, who's mm -hmm. a gospel artist. Mm -hmm. um, you know, she really had to just let people know, yeah, just like you were saying, mm -hmm. I feel this way. Mm -hmm. I'm going to dress well. I'm going to wear makeup. I'm going to look good. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that because I'm a gospel artist, X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. But at first, it really took them a minute mm -hmm. to really accept her for that. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Until she really kind of put her foot down mm -hmm. like, no, don't judge me. Only God can. Right. So I feel like, you know... Sierra Leone, the churches, mm -hmm. they tend to do that. Mm -hmm. But you're but you're right though. Maybe it's the fact that they're scared mm -hmm. that these people will change because fame does a lot to yeah, it everyone. Lot. Yes. It's not even about the gospel yes. artists, the Christians. Remaining or humble is so, key. Right. Yes. So maybe that's what it is, or maybe we're not even there yet. Because you you're talking about the African gospel contest. Mm -hmm. I don't think you were able to bring any Sierra Leone. Was any Sierra Leone participated? We, we did have. And, okay. and and we blessed people because a lot of people were recognized from that platform. From Sierra Leone or the ones here? We didn't, we, I don't recall any Sierra Leone coming here, but those that are in the United States okay. did compete. No, that's Myself what I was trying to find out if you guys were able yes. to just um, bring. Um... We, were, we were getting there, but it's a matter of time. It's a matter of money when it comes to sponsorship it's it's a lot okay. and people love recognition of course but not everybody wants to pay the cost or price of that and when it's gospel sponsorship is harder yes well, i'm thinking it, it, i mean it, everybody it well even if you pretend everybody seems to like love when cost. i went to sierra leone mm -hmm. one year um i was clearly told that we can sponsor non-gospel events but we have had to put a ban on gospel i was told that there was a time I went to one particular company and got sponsorship. Three years later, they, they told me we're, we're not no, sponsoring we gospel, gospel anymore. anymore. Yeah. That's serious. Yeah, that's well, now it makes sense why the gospel industry is not really hard. booming the way it's supposed yeah. to be. Yeah. You know, um, I think it's been a minute since I really heard a Sierra Leone gospel song on a level. But let me tell you something. Okay. I do believe that as children of God, mm -hmm. right, God meant to bless us. And for us to shine as stars wherever we are, right? right? So as children of God, as gospel ministers, we should be able to stand on the platform Sinach stand is on, stands on, right. right? We should be able to stand on stadium national level events, right? Mm -hmm. And I can tell you when, you, when you get an encounter with good gospel praise and worship, some of that singing is way good quality and better than secular singing, honestly. And um, we just need that opportunity. The gospel body of Christ just needs that opportunity. So being able to mix gospel with other events in, in and within and alongside slam nominations, mm -hmm. yeah, it, it, just, it just warms my heart. Like It makes me so happy that you are of this quality to right. be on this same platform in this same competitive award. I think that should send a message to our community and our country that if we only give our gospel people a chance, they can go beyond. They can go beyond. Yes. 
Well, I think that's what it is. Uh, they do really need a chance mm -hmm. because, like, listen to your songs, for example, they will get to listen to it. It's really good. And I feel like um, you need to promote it. You need to push it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I'm, well, not tired because you can praise God anywhere and mm -hmm. with any song. Mm -hmm. But when I'm really in my praise and worship mode, I don't really, I have few Serena songs I can really relate to. Mm -hmm. All the songs that are really of that level that makes me feel a certain type of way. Yes. By Nigerians. Mm -hmm. I mean, they make a lot of sense. It's right. really nice. It's really good. Mm -hmm. Even when I, you know, like after my Martini, for example, was trying to give, you know, testimony or whatnot, mm -hmm. you know, um, as much as I pushed Sierra Leone music, mm -hmm. I didn't really have that one song yeah. that can relate yes. to what I was trying to say. Go for you are great. <laughs> right, you know what I mean? Right. Yes. You know, so I had to, mm -hmm. you know, of course, I mean, Bank is not, well, he's into, you know, gospel things mm -hmm. now, for example. But I was looking for someone, you know, something that, really touches my heart that, you know, but there wasn't really nothing. And for me, promoting everything Sierra Leone yes. to release a video mm -hmm. with, you know, Nigerian, Nigerian songs, friends. not even one. No. I wanted to do it because it was God. Mm -hmm. For me, it was like, God shines. Anyway, it's God. But mm -hmm. then I'm like, I wish we need to change there was that this one. Story. Yeah. We need to rewrite that story. Right. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? But maybe they do have it. Don't get me wrong. You know what I mean? It's not probably, you know, where I can get a hold of it. Right. So, so for me, I feel like that's what's missing. Okay. We don't have quality songs, no, so you know, or maybe everybody just really just shine away. I don't or agree just, mm -hmm. um, because I am directly a part of the gospel community okay. and groups. Mm -hmm. And what we lack are gospel promoters. We lack well, promoters that would promote gospel mm -hmm. the way the secular promoters promote secular music. Okay. That's what we lack. We okay. lack those gospel platforms that are needed mm -hmm. that the Nigerians have. Nigerians have support. They have a lot of support. That is what we... First of all, the infighting among gospels is worse than the infighting among secular people. Are you serious? Yes. Yes. I mean, I mean, it is, it is, it is. I'm very honest with you. That's another story for another day. So, so you have to be unified somewhat, somehow, even if it's face value, because if your hearts cannot show love and unity and support for one another, the way you should not that it's not being done, it's being done, but, right. but. I have been in groups where Christians have, have cast down, caught, and brutalized one another. And that is wrong. And no one, not one oh person God. will say a word. And, and we call ourselves Christians. So, so these are gospel groups, right? Just the way you would see it happening in any WhatsApp group, right? And it, it's embarrassing. It's a disgrace. And you call yourself children of God. So, that yes, a, we need to have more gospel promoters. Well, maybe that's what it is. Maybe mm -hmm. there are the songs, the songs are out there, but like mm -hmm. you say, we're not, it, they're not, yeah. it's not, it's not coming out. Yeah. It's not getting to us. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. you, you, you play what you see, what you hear. Yes. You know what I mean? I'm not hearing it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I know we do have a lot of talents. Of course, you, this is Mike mm -hmm. Scott. There's so many people, yes. so many. you know, Meminato Kabi is like so many. I know mm -hmm. they are, mm -hmm. but then it's like, where can I get these songs? Let me so, tell you about the promoters, please. I mean, Let you me guys need to really come on in. gospel ministers, mm -hmm. right? Very few are exceptions, and they know this. I have told them this. Very few gospel ministers empower each other. I have hosted so many that have come to the United States. Very few give back that favor of helping one another. It's always about them. And as children of God, at some point, or as a human being, how about helping somebody? I'm sorry, else? when you're explaining that, I don't no, even want to serious. use the word children of God because no, children of I'm God serious. doesn't act like that. So it is, it is are they pretending? No, Do they no, feel like, just, okay, we cannot make circular no. music, so let's just go to God and it, they'll be acting a fool? No, it's, it's human. It's human, it's human um, behavior, honestly. It can happen in any industry. It, it's just by the kind of human being you are. And self, being selfish and wanting the attention and spotlight on yourself. Is, is a normal reaction oh, from everybody. Why, it's yeah, it's an emotion struggling. everybody in life works on. Okay. Um, possibly there are more reasons to work together among secular artists, mm -hmm. but I believe that at some point that realization, because I actually held the first gospel conference in Sierra Leone in 2018, mm -hmm. last time I was here at the New Life Ministries International, mm -hmm. and I never realized how divided they were. We have over eight gospel associations, and getting them to work together was hard. After three meetings, we succeeded. We formed a committee. Mm -hmm. As soon as I left, they went back to the same church, the same, the same bishop, and 
and stood on the pulpit and said, we've never had a conference before. Please unite us. Oh, These no. are gospel people for you in Sierra Leone. But it takes the grace of God to continue doing what you're doing because that behavior would not just stem from the ministers but from everybody involved, right? Okay. I'll say that here today because they stood on that platform again, same church, and, and said, said they never... this is the first time we're having a conference to unite us. And I took them all the way to the minister of tourism who told them, if only as Christians you can unite and form the right body, I will get you guys a concert in the stadium. The Minister of Tourism, um, Ms. Pratt, said that. So Honorable, is it because... Um, Dr. Pratt. Is, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, yeah. I don't really know. Mm -hmm. Is it because it's you, it's coming from you, the fact that maybe you're not in Sierra Leone? Because mm -hmm. I know that also is an issue, like mm -hmm. you said, not even with gospel, with mm -hmm. other artists. They have problems mm -hmm. with the diaspora and artists. Mm -hmm. Is it no. that? No. Or they are just the way they are? They are just the way they are. Okay. Because even though they did it again... They are still divided. They're still divided. Yes. Mm -hmm. Somebody will do a show in the stadium and the only, only 50 people will show up. And it will be called the Sierra National Gospel Awards. And you all are getting awards at this event. But yet you cannot show support that you as gospel artists have made it to the stadium. Okay. The person has to be backed by what? Money and things. When you cannot see somebody struggling to bring things and to succeed, like it's just frustrating. I bet yeah. it is. It is. Um, what do you What do you think um, mm -hmm. should be the solution? Like, what would you say to them right now? Because we're, we're, we're going to talk about slam yeah. when we come back mm -hmm. and about you, you know. But for that gospel artist coming from you, like, mm -hmm. what would you tell them now? Like, I I would say, um, please look at it as swimming in an ocean. Right, and you're trying to float, but yet if you see, if you can just touch somebody's hand, right, mm -hmm. and you can all form that circle, you all together can float and rise above whatever situation is under. Okay. And united we stand, divided we fall. Well, I strongly yeah. believe in that. When people are divided and realize I'm really not getting anywhere, possibly, just possibly, they will decide to honestly and effectively and wholeheartedly, lovingly work together as Christians. All right, yeah. coming from Gile Kebi Schultz. Yeah. Don't go anywhere, I'll be back after this. So let's watch the real talk with Eileen TV show by our very own daughter of Sierra Leone, Eileen Kistar. Welcome back to Real Talk with Eileen TV show. Of course, this is the third season and this is a celeb edition. So you're going to be seeing a lot of celebs, all the ones in the diaspora because I'm currently here. But of course, I'm coming home. I miss home. You already know how it is. If you just walked in and you wonder who this beautiful lady is, she goes by the name Gile Kebi Show. She's a gospel artist and, of course, the founder of Slam. And we're going to talk about Slam. Slam. Slam, they do a lot of things. I just won the award for best talk show host. Thank you to all who voted for me. You know, but that's another reason why I have her here because you have people who are saying Slam is not credible and things like that. I'm not really the awards type person, but for mm -hmm. some reason I accepted this one. A lot of times when they put my name in all these awards, I mm -hmm. tell them, take, take, Take me out of it mm -hmm. because I don't want, that's how the disrespect starts. It's a whole bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm not really about that life. Mm -hmm. I can always say my reward is in heaven. Like mm -hmm. I'm not worried. Everybody knows what I do and that's it. Mm -hmm. You know, but with yours, maybe the fact that I know how hard you work, you know, you know, and I don't even know, it's not because I know her personally, but it is what it is. I was nominated and of course I want it, you know, but slam. How did that come about earlier? I know you mentioned one or two reasons of how you came about that. Can mm -hmm. you just elaborate a little bit of okay. how Sam was born? So when I got ready to launch my gospel album, mm -hmm. I didn't know my fellow musicians. I okay. did not grow up a musician. Mm -hmm. And I started asking questions. But one thing I did notice was that the promoters did not introduce musicians to one another. Okay. Because by so doing, it gave them power. Mm -hmm. It gave them the power to control us. Right. Mm -hmm. And for us to be um, bestowed onto them, would you say? Mm -hmm. So I did a lot of research. I learned about press kits, marketing, etc. And after I launched my gospel album successfully, by the grace of God, I started talking with other artists like, are you facing these problems? Like, who's this person? Who's that person? And I 
finally got to a point where I talked to about four or five of them. One was called um, Bezo the Mayor at that time. He's now Minister Edward Kagbo. He used to rap. Okay. And then Med Tutu, who a lot of people may know. Mm -hmm. He's one of the older ones. Papa T. Okay. And Salon JR, mm -hmm. along with Mansu. For Mansu and Sibo. Yes. Okay. So uh, I. I had a discussion with these gentlemen and they all expressed the same thing that, hey, yeah, we're trying to make it. It's just not happening. We formed a group before when it came to leadership, we scattered. I said, okay, for my reasons, I want us to come together. But I mean, we have to put self aside. Starting this means we're going to serve our entertainment industry, right? Mm -hmm. So we, we came up with the name. We were aware that there was a slam before. S-L-A-M, and we decided to have S-L-A-A-M because we didn't just want to um, focus or cater for musicians. Okay. We wanted to cater for artists, talent, and musicians. Okay. And there's a thing with musicians, they're always arguing with promoters and DJs. <laughs> and DJs. And DJs, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So I was a gospel singer, new in the industry, and I think that was the key to success at that time because mm -hmm. we had conference calls where... Musicians would insult DJs. DJs would bang the phone. Oh, Ms. Gilev, not for you. Not for you. Like, I don't come on at this phone. And it, it takes being um, calm and um, a mediator. Okay. Not that you're coming to solve problems, but you're trying to get somewhere, mm -hmm. right? And letting everybody see that, okay, you can have your beef or your argument. I just need you to focus and let me know what Slam can do to make DJs bigger. And you, musician, I need you to understand that for you to succeed, you need the producer, you need the DJ and the promoter. And so we created an organization at that time. And I can honestly tell you, some people say, oh, you think Slam is the first. Uh, duh. I do <laughs> think Slam was the first for a lot of things. Okay. We created an organization at that time that provided and recognized producers, DJs, promoters, comedians, like at that the time, whole... at that time, no other organization organize, recognized those groups of people. Okay. And I asked myself, how can we even be better? How can we tell the story of Sierra Leone culture? So the BT Honors had just started, and, I, and, and it struck me. Everybody's doing awards, but one, we're going to do an award that lets the musician know that you are not successful without all these other people. And lets the DJ or the promoter know that if we have competitive promotion, this will increase our promoters. Okay. If we have competitive producers, this will increase the quality of music production. Mm -hmm. If we have competitive music video producers, this will let musicians know that I need a better video quality. Yeah, right. And I can honestly tell you, the first year we only honored the lifetime honorees. We honored Bonnie Mark, Colin Spratt, Abu White, who stood on stage and let us know that he sang for th Sierra Leone for 30 years. Good morning, Sierra Leone. Good afternoon, Freetown. Oh. And he cried. And that that was the first and only award he has received in his entire life. Now, whether I may be wish this may be wishful thinking, but I noticed that after that, first of all, His Excellency, the former president, Ernest Cromer, mm -hmm started the Roquel, the order of the Roquel, and recognized entertainment, right? After that, other organizations started doing started this. Started doing it. Right? So, so whether we started it or not, or whether something, created whether something, something struck is you while you were sleeping, or you got a vision, mm -hmm. or your meeting or board members decided you should do it, I am happy that we did it. Back then, people like Giancana Bay, um, Bonnie Ma, Collins Pratt, King Masco, they have all walked the stages of slam. And another thing with slam that people don't know, mm -hmm. through slam you mm -hmm. are able to get people to actually come for the event. Yes. Like, you know, basically inviting them in. You've got the visas, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I know TJ Cole, I think, was the first yes. one. Yes, yes. You know, um, I don't know. I never really saw him here. I don't know what happened. No, TJ with Cole him. missed his flight. Oh, okay. He got his but you, visa. But you've had other. Had who are King some of the other people? Who, oh, King Milan. Okay. Yes, we had the first gospel musical, the first female gospel musician in Sierra Leone, Hannah Williams. Okay. She came and received her award, and since then she's been coming to to the United States a lot. So th I mean, I I just want to say kudos to you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's not just 
the fact that you you know you're just doing the awards just to say, but mm -hmm. you're actually you know trying to get people to actually come and visit mm -hmm. yes. and things like that. And I know you did write the letters for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Some didn't get it, however, mm -hmm. you know. So that's really good. So for this year's slam, mm -hmm. I know, you know, with COVID and everything else, you know, everything was kind of laid back. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of people did a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So when slam came, I know a lot of people were asking me like, who are these people? I'm not. I, I mean, slam has been there, but I know. Me being there, a lot of people kind of know about Slam. Okay. <laughs> you know, because trust me, it was like, we don't know those people. We don't know mm -hmm. for the ones that don't know, mm -hmm. you know, because the industry, everybody's struggling. So a yeah. lot of things people are really starting to, you mm -hmm. know. So, um, and of course, um, my, my, you know, my business partner, um, Viva Mix, was there as well mm -hmm. because she's doing good. I mean, mm -hmm. all the nominees, I think, were well-deserved mm -hmm. and the voting. So are you one of those that just give the awards to people you like or care for or just go with the flow or the winners, including myself, mm -hmm. were actually voted for. Like, okay. do we actually get the votes? Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, if you could possibly ask about me, mm -hmm. even without slam, I don't care if it's my husband or my child, you are going to work for it. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to the winners, mm -hmm. I am the only person that gets to see those votes before they're announced, okay. other than the person who manufactures um, them, who is a Caucasian, Whitman mm -hmm. person, right? But um, with SLAM, first off, you have to get nominated. Okay. That's key. Mm -hmm. Because when you are nominated, it tells the world. You have people who say they don't know about SLAM, but guess what? SLAM is located in the United States. Okay. And when it comes to me without slam as a human being, and even in other areas of life that I've worked, whether it's politics or it's at work, I do not compromise, okay. even if it's my husband. Okay. And I believe with slam, being able to be credible is key, though credibility depends on who you're talking to, right? What people um, need to realize is for you to even be nominated for slam, you have to have a certain quality or standard. There's a reason why we created an upcoming category and a full category, okay. right? Um, and the votes this year, overnight we got 11,000 votes. Back in the days, I would check votes every day. That, that's the fun part for me mm -hmm. because you will know when somebody knows that they have been nominated. And that was another shortcoming we used to have okay. because people are not online. We don't know everybody. Right. Slam has become so much easier this year because there's a lot of online presence. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of WhatsApp groups. Mm -hmm. the, the gap has definitely been bridged. Like that is number one goal, to bridge that gap of entertainment knowledge between Sierra Leone and USA. Mm -hmm. Those in Sierra Leone know what we do here. And those over there know, know what, what we yeah. do. Like mm -hmm. everybody can respect each other on their platforms. Mm -hmm. Back in the days, it was like in America, we're not doing anything. In America, we thought Sierra Leoneans were, not, we're doing not doing anything. anything. But now, but yeah, we now are the, able the to gap know. is bridged. Yeah. Yeah. Promoters can can talk and make shows. People can come from Sierra Leone, and you won't just depend on a promoter to make your show. That is key, right? Because True. promoters were taking advantage of many big artists that used to come from Sierra Leone. Yep. Right? True. And they would use people here to do the work for them. And the artists won't know how it's done. You won't even know how much money was made from your name. Right? Mm -hmm. People will know you by your song, but they won't know your name, which yeah. is not a good way to promote. That's how a promoter who wants to make money or a booking agent promotes. Okay. Whereas now, Slam, would, you know, it has given wisdom to a lot of people on how to manage their careers and their talents. We also have um, the fine artists category. We have a lot of artists. Yeah, like it, it was a lot. Yes. It, you know, it was a lot. I mean, I was just going through them like, oh my God. And honestly, mm -hmm. through Slam, mm -hmm. I got to know a lot more people because I was going, I mean, category by category, like, who's this person? Who's this person? But with me, like I said, it was easier because I know your personality. Mm -hmm. You're just like me. It doesn't matter what it is. We don't mess with our integrity. Right. So I know you did a lot of research. Like, I know it was good. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I'm not going to say anything out there because 
low-minded mm-hmm. people, mm-hmm. they're gonna say, oh, because you did it. Mm-hmm. Even though with me, it was, I mean, I'm, I'm, I mean, no, of mm-hmm. course, I gotta blow my own horn. However, everybody knows but I'm I can trying in my own you, field. I, I, I realized people voted for you. Yeah. I, because one thing I do, I take screenshots. For anybody who chooses to know their vote, mm-hmm. you're more than welcome. Because I would hate to change numbers and be embarrassed. You were not winning in the beginning. In fact, I checked like a night before and I was like, whoa, where did she come from? <laughs> Only, I'm, I'm serious. Like, I am very serious. Like, you were second the whole time and the leader was just ahead. I was scared. Like, wow, this is really happening. And the night before, I saw so many numbers flip. Because let me tell you what happened. Mm-hmm. Um, when I first got it, I didn't really pay attention to it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a promoter myself, regardless of what it is. I have mm-hmm. followers, I have things. So a lot of people didn't even know I was part of it. So it was actually after, you know, I had to be reminded, like, people were sending it to me, I voted for you, I voted for you. And then I was like, oh my God. So then I started really putting it out there because it wasn't really about me, mm-hmm. but it was about what you were doing as well to let people know Slam is here. So I really started, I never promote no mm-hmm. awards. I never did. Whether I'm nominated or not, I don't. Mm-hmm. You check my fa- check my no, history. I understand I don't. that. So I started doing it. I guess that's when anybody realized, you know, so of course all the fans are like, oh, you have to win this one. Like, it's not even. So I think that's where they came from. Wow. With all the voting and stuff, I started promoting it, actually. And mm-hmm. I was like, you know what? You know, this is credible. Let me just do it. You know, even if I don't win mm-hmm. at all, it's more like let people know what you're doing. Okay. So definitely I took over. I was promoting myself now. <laughs> and then I won. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Um, I know you had a lot of votes. I mean, what would you say is the figure? Like, how many people really, really voted? Because um, you mentioned something about 11,000 overnight. Yes, That's a lot. Yes. For I, I something shocked. that short. Right. And so it irks you when people say, oh, I don't know about them. Mm-hmm. And it makes me realize that no marketing is ever enough. Right. Because we have so many communities, right? Um, overnight, we had 11,000 votes. By day two, we had 25,000. But I got busy getting ready for the finale. Mm -hmm. And day final, day six, just six days of voting, we had 111, 114, 111, 14,000. 114,000 votes, right? I couldn't believe it. Like, like people really took this time. They took it seriously. in the past, we, we always do <laughs> Facebook and the website because we can't seem to get phone companies on board. Okay. And I really wish we could get them on board, right? Well, you need to push on that one. We I think are. with with everything that happened this year, maybe they will come yes. on board next year. And mm-hmm. and I believe that this year was an opportunity, even though we had the COVID crisis, mm-hmm. um, the the pandemic. I believe it was an opportunity for people who could not go in to see the event globally because this event gets shared every day. I meet a stranger, I meet a foreigner, it's shared. Cameroon went crazy. Oh. All their movies, that most, one of their main movies, Fisherman's Diary, that made it to Netflix, mm-hmm. was submitted for Slam. The year before last, we had a movie that had Vivica Fox in it, on Slam, in the international movie category. Oh, cool. so, so for another culture to respect what we do to the extent of wanting to be a part of it, it, that's, it that's sends good. a message. And it lets those who think that slam is nothing because we're not wearing baggy pants and breast trousers, <laughs> right? Those who think that we are not funky enough, hip enough. The to, numbers, to, the yeah, numbers are coming. The numbers in and are it's, different, it's, yeah, different, and so. it tells you that society is different. Okay. And and we are tapping and creating a platform for families with children that have talents to say, wow. There is a platform for my child. Okay. So yes. um, I know you did everything online. Mm-hmm. Um, so are we ever going to get an award? Yes. The <laughs> awards have arrived, by the way. Okay. They have arrived. that's what's important. And um, <laughs> I, I wanted to wait till I get to Sierra Leone. Okay. But I've actually just decided that I'm going to ship all of them. Okay. And um, those who are in the United States will get their awards on the Slam Talk Show coming soon to a network near you Okay. at GGP Studios, which okay. is Gile Global Production Studios. Okay. Yes. And then, Sarah, you do the event yes. and everything else. All right, cool. We're looking forward to that. Um, I don't want you to move. I'm almost at the end of the show. I'll be right back after this.
So let's watch the real talk with Eileen in TV show by our very own daughter of Sierra Leone, Eileen Kistar. Welcome back to Real Talk Show with Eileen. Of course, we're almost at the end of the show. If you just walked in, I have Gila Kebi Show's a gospel artist. The lady, woman that wears a lot of hats, she's doing a lot of things. You know, she has a regular job, movies, gospel, slam awards, children. everything, children. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, so it's a lot going on with her. However, she's still able to smile all through it all. We just talk about slam. We talk about the issues in the gospel industry. You know what I mean? We already know there's a lot going on. I just hope they're able to fix some of these things. But I want to talk now about you as an artist. I know we mentioned... Um, the album that you released it was 2011. You mm -hmm. said you're a perfectionist. That's why it took you 10 years. Mm -hmm. You know, well, um, 11 because you mm -hmm. said 2022. Um, but besides that, and you know, your job because you have masters in IT, you do consultancy. Like, I can't even keep up with this lady. Trust me. Um, but what's the next big thing? You know, mm -hmm. um, for Gile, what's what? The next big thing mm -hmm. is Gile Global Productions. Okay. This year, Gile Global Productions undertook the virtual production of SLAM. Okay. And moving forward, announcement, SLAM is transitioning not to an association, but an event. Okay. That will be managed and produced by Gile Global Productions, where we have our partners come in and we do that event okay. the right way. And in a, well, more, in a better way. In a better way. We are yeah. always striving for perfection. Okay. Um, Movie production. We've, we've just shot our first short movie. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. It, it will be coming out pretty soon to a station near, near you. Okay. But Gile Global Productions is definitely about taking all the productive and entertainment and artistic things I've been doing over the years, whether it's events and making them better. We once did the um, Sierra Leone's Top 100 Humanitarians. Okay. That's something I'm looking forward to in the future, mm -hmm. along with um, my album release and managing artists at a minimal. Okay. We're not inviting artists. We want to be very selective okay. because we want people who are ready to follow direction and, and project what we have to offer, okay. which is um, a brand, an image, and, you know, good work. Yes. So we expect to see a lot of movies because, trust me, there are a lot of movies out there. We'll never get to see them. I hope it's not the situation where we don't get to see your film. No, are you we going to see, see my... it? Where are we going to see it? You will see my film, and I have asked God to okay. allow everyone to see it on an international platform. Okay. Not even on a Sierra Leonean platform. So you're trying to push it? Yes, we're trying to push it because... Um, it's not your average Sierra Leone movie. The storyline, mm -hmm. the, cast, the Are cast. Are you writing this movie? Yes, the movie has actually already been shot. It was written okay. by Pastor Peter Kamara. Okay. He was the, also the editor for uh, Abacha Sisters. Very talented um, person. Oh, yes, he is. And I, I truly is. believe in giving the opportunity to my fellow Sierra Leoneans so that okay. I can have that award and say, this person who's was a Sierra Leonean, Leonean did it. Union. Yes, okay. yes. I, I just pray for more Sierra Leoneans with focus and the talent. He's very talented. Okay, so you started with the short movie, but you, yes. you're going to be doing a lot of movies. Yes. Are you going to go to Sierra Leone and shoot movies, or I, are you just I, going to do it here? No, no. I'm actually planning on going to Sierra Leone. It's okay. definitely cheaper in Africa, anywhere. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was actually planning on Cameroon, Nigeria, and Sierra Leone, but... Everything is in God's hands right now with, okay. you know, you with everything take it going on. to a whole new level. Yes, definitely. We should. All right. We should. Well, it's been lovely having you here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, good luck in everything you're doing. Mm -hmm. Of course, with Slam, with your new production, mm -hmm. and of course, the album, the song. September. September. We're in September. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can't wait to hear those songs. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm sure by the time this show airs, the song will already be out. Mm -hmm. I know it's going to be good because the songs are beautiful thank you you know what i mean you do have a lovely voice thank um, you you know a woman with many talents keep it up thank you um so yeah i have to go but mm -hmm. i do have a gift for you okay oh. yes gift just appeared oh, wow. and it's right here it's thank from you. me to you with love from the real talk team oh. um yeah just to say thank you for coming here and this of course something that you can always remember when i'm gone back to sierra leone this is a very you pleasant know. surprise 
And I want to thank you for what you do. Thank and you. congratulations thank on you. winning thank the, you. Thank you. the Slam Best Talk Show Award. I do. I'm glad this is like my first for this year. Okay. Also, um, I look forward to having you on the Slam Talk Show. Sure, definitely. I will be yeah. there. And I'm going to win a lot more awards because I'm doing the damn thing. <laughs> you know, to everybody else that was nominated with me, I actually met, um, I think, Kel Fowler. Um, who was nominated as well, you know, mm -hmm. came up to me, big up to you. He was like, you know what, well, you're popular, you deserve it. Mm -hmm. People like that, you know, That's of course, Stella is my girl. I love Stella to death. I think she's really doing yes, good. Is. Um, yeah. But anyways, um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. I have to go now. Can I, I ask you a last question? Sure. Doesn't it feel good to be on a platform with people who are doing as good as you? Sure. I mean, I don't think everybody supposed to be in that category because we're putting all the work. However, they're trying because they just did a social media oh and just talk goodness. a lot of nonsense. <laughs> um, I'm just saying, you know what I mean? But we're out there in Sierra Leone doing work. But yeah, it's their time and effort. So yes, I mean, it feels good, actually. Um, I didn't know two of them. Mm -hmm. Like I said, this one, I think Inside Talk Salon Inside, we met, I didn't, I didn't know about him. We do a lot of research. Yeah, you know, okay. which was good. He was really cool. Yes. You know what I mean? And and he's doing good. Like, I had to just follow after, but I didn't know mm -hmm. who he was, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. I'm, I, you know, I'm always on social media, but I'm not really on social media like we that. We didn't know. So I don't know a lot that was going on. Yeah. You know what I mean? Of course, the only person I'm really aware that's doing really good was Stella. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. then when I met him, he told me what he was doing. I was like, mm -hmm. big up. Yes. You know, to everybody else, Yo-Yo is my boy. Like, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. you know, they, 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 they I mean... Social media versus, you know, studios, you know, everything. It doesn't matter. Talk show host is talk show host. I won. That's all that matters. <laughs> I got to go. <laughs> I've been your host today, Elin Kisa. Yes. Till next week.